Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the newly released Hula Caramel by Benefit Cosmetics. Swatches, comparison demos with the original Hula matte bronzer, as well as comparison swatches with other browsers that have been in my heavy rotation. If you want to take a look at those swatches, the demo, and my thoughts on Hula Caramel, then please keep on watching. Hello my friends, if it's your first time here, thank you so much for coming. My name is Alicia. Kinky Sweat is a platform that I named to represent my kinky hair and sweat life. In addition to being a beauty lover, a fitness professional here at NYC, all my movements musings can be found daily on the Instagram. If you want to find out about any events and classes that I teach here at NYC, if you live here of course, you could check out all that information on my website. Benefit! I remember I had a benefit paper, not online, paper catalog. I think it was in high school. I flipped through that thing like 10 times a day. I was so intrigued and captivated by their products, how the packaging was designed, their product descriptions, quirky names, quirky descriptions of their products and what they're meant to do. The whole marketing surrounding vintage benefit cosmetics, I mean, still has me thinking about them till this day. I just was curious to see if there was a list of products of discontinued benefit makeup. And on Cosmopolitan, they have a list list of like the discontinued products that Benefit used to carry. Like, remember Shellac? It's supposed to be like a liquid makeup sealant and I was so intrigued by that. The Bathina skincare line. I still have the original Bathina touch me and try to leave cream. I kept this jar because I just love the cream. I mean, they discontinued it. I don't know if they'll ever re-release it, but yeah, it's all like worn but this is now where i keep my my push pins in my binder clips so it's become a desk accessory i don't think at the time when benefit first launched as a brand like in the 90s that the hula bronzer was a part of that lineup i forgot when hula came onto the scene but hula bronzer even till this day has been one of the best selling bronzers around the globe it has a cult following the fact that it's matte is not too gray not too warm it's the perfectly neutral colored brown for bronzer. I think it released during the time that people wanted to contour a bronzer as well. Contour usually takes on a more grayer tone in hue because it's supposed to mimic a shadow, uh, an actual shadow on your face. But people were like wanting to do both contouring and bronzer at the same time. And if the bronzer was too orange, then it wouldn't achieve that effect. Hula was the perfect bronzer to do both at the same time to still provide that warmth, but still provide that beautiful shade on the cheekbone and give the face a beautiful sculpted look. I actually have a mini hula and I think I bought the hula bronzer years ago. It showed up on my skin. I think it did what it was supposed to do. But despite it being a best-selling bronzer around the globe and on the planet, a lot of women and men couldn't use it because it was just too light. And it's like, we want to partake in that celebration of the best bronzer ever. They came out with the hula light. I don't really know why it took so long for Benefit to release deeper skin tones for their Hula Bronzer. I don't know how makeup is made, if the powders with more pigmentation take more formulation. Maybe they've been formulating it for a long time and they couldn't release it until now, until they got it right. Who really knows? Needless to say, I was thrilled to see that they released two new shades, Hula Caramel and Hula Toasted. I went into Sephora and swatched the original Hula, Hula Caramel and Hula Toasted. Just so you guys can see how they look together side by side. The Hula Toasted is toasted. It has like a nice rich red brown hue to it. If any of you guys have picked it up and are of a deeper skin tone, let us know down below. Sound off. How does it look? How does it feel? How does it apply? How does it blend? I already have my foundation on as well as some concealer and lightly set my face because one side will apply Hula Caramel and the other side will do the original Hula. The Hula Caramel cardboard box is exactly designed as the original. I'm sorry, I'm looking so stiff. My neck is just is killing me today so I'm like but I'm trying to fight against it. I'm sorry, you guys. This is the original Hula design. This is the mini of that box. And here you see that they're pretty much exactly the same. You have like the bamboo detail around the box, except the box color is different to indicate what shade it is inside. When you open it, it has Hula Caramel embossed in the pan, but it also comes with this brush. 
I know it's supposed to be designed for easy application on the hollows of your cheekbones, but I will never use this brush. I mean, it's just, it just looks cute because it's like a boxed brush that goes inside the compact, which is a little hard to get out. You kind of have to pull on the bristles so you don't get your fingers in the actual pan. It's a little weird. It has a mirror, but um, maybe good for one eyebrow application. I don't know. The one brush that they did release, I think with the Hula Light and the rest of like the Hula Liquid Bronzer and the uh, Body Tanner was like the Hula brush. I got this at the Macy's in Denver when I was there for my traincation. It's such a novelty brush. I mean, I just couldn't help it. It has a shiny gold bamboo handle with the turquoise colored tips. It's synthetic. I actually really like this brush. I haven't been using it much with the huge influx of Sonya G and Wayne Goss in my life, but this is actually a really nice brush. Very soft and I feel ideal for bronzer. It hugs the cheekbones very nicely and overall hugs the contours of your face, especially this portion very well for a nice application of color. I'm gonna use my Sony G Face Pro. I just think this is an ideal brush for bronzer, the way it's angled, and again, it just makes for perfect application. I had the Lawless Woke Up Like This foundation on sample. I've been really liking it. Stay tuned for any updates on that, whether it's gonna be a makeup update video or just gonna be included in my March favorites. But let's get in a little closer. Before I put these bronzers on my face, let's first see the swatches live. I know I already showed you a picture, but eh, you know I like to do my swatches. On the box, it says medium to deep. I know it's very hard to read because the text is right on the bamboo print. Medium to deep powder bronzer for face. Now I'm gonna quickly pull up the Sephora app because I'm not sure if this shade has an actual description tied to it. It'll be interesting to know what they describe this tone to be. Oh and we should also go over product details anyway. I'm so good at this. No, I'm not. The Benefit Cosmetics Hula Matte Bronzer in the shade Caramel, designed for medium deep skin tones. Retails for $30, and it comes in at 0.28 ounces or eight grams of product. It doesn't actually describe the shade. It's very warm, it's very warm. The original Hula Bronzer is described to just be a natural bronze color. You can see that the original Hula shade is a lot more brown and the caramel has a lot more warmth to it, which I, I personally love. I'm like neutral golden and I found that bronzers that have more of like a, a orange hue to them just look better on my skin tone. They actually warm me up. Here is Hula Caramel. That's what that looks like. So smooth, beautifully silky and just wait till you see how this goes on the skin. And here is the original Hula shade. So you see it's significantly lighter. If you build this up, you can see it. I probably could get away with this as like a light contour shade for my skin tone. I also just realized that I don't have anything on my lids and they just look insanely discolored. So I'm just gonna put on whatever Oh, I just poked myself. <laughs> Whatever leftover foundation I had on my brush, I'm just gonna put it on there so it could kind of make it appear a little more cohesive. First, let's apply the original Hula bronzer shade. And again, going in with my Sonia Face Pro. Totally not ideal packaging for application, I have to say. It's a box. The size of the box, get them away. So that's the original Hula Matte Bronzer, and you see it gives my skin a little bit of a hue. It doesn't quite warm it up like the caramel does. Just you wait. I'm wiping my face pearl off my microfiber towel so we can get a true to color experience from the caramel. This packs a punch. Like, you're gonna get a lot on there, so just dab off before you go in. You see what I mean? It just looks like I'm bronze. It does look like a tan enhancer. Like this gives me some color, but this, and it packs a punch too. Like you gotta be careful with this. If you apply too much, it could be a little overwhelming. And just for the sake of appearing even, I'm going to apply Hula Caramel on this side as well. It just warms up my skin so quickly. I love it. Just putting some on the 
tops of my forehead. My hair is in the way. Also on the jaw. Why not? I'm taking my Sonia G Detail Pro and just near the bridge of the nose and into the front of my brow as well. Oh, that may have been too much. <laughs> taking my Wayne Goss airbrush and just softening that up a little bit. I'm telling you, man, this... Hula Caramel packs a punch. Gave my face pro a wipe and just doing a final buff to make sure everything is blended and doesn't look harsh. Maybe except for my nose, but everything else looks okay. And here we have Hula Caramel on both sides of my face as well as the forehead and some on the bridge of the nose. And you can just see how much warmth it adds to my skin. And the color itself is adding like a natural highlight effect to the center of my face. Yes, I did apply concealer that was lighter than my skin tone I applied the makeup forever self setting concealer in 34 and I lightly set that concealer with my milk makeup set and blur loose powder in the shade light but that's it I didn't add any glowy powder or illuminating powder to the center of my face the caramel shade itself just adds that effect I think because of the tone and this again is more suitable for a medium it says medium to deep but this I feel is great for tan spectrum as well the toasted swatch you saw in that photo posted earlier in the video that's gonna give you some richness man if you're deeper than me my foundation references are down below i'm mac nc42 fenty beauty 330 the lawless foundation shade i have on today is bronze my hourglass vanish seamless liquid shade is honey but the stick shade is warm honey if you're anywhere around there caramel is gonna look gorgeous on you if you have the original hula map it's gonna show up but it's not gonna give you the same warmth effect that the caramel is you could build up the original matte color and it's still gonna look gorgeous and i'm so happy that the light is not as sunny today because i feel on camera the caramel shade is actually showing true to color and here's even more of a close-up and the powder itself the texture of it very smooth and silky very easy to apply but although it's matte it has a beautiful texture to the skin especially when it applies that it still looks like skin and it's not just sitting on top now a couple of other bronzer swatches i wanted to share with you because i've been rotating a lot i'll swatch the hula caramel up here just so you could have it as a reference. A shade that immediately came to mind as a comparison one is the Take Home the Bronze from The Bomb Cosmetics, but this is in Tony. They changed the shade name. It's the second shade, but see how it's very similar in hue? Or maybe not. Maybe I'm just crazy. This is a little more, it's like, it doesn't seem as rich as the caramel now that I'm swatching them next to each other. Interesting. The Marc Jacobs, the original 102 Tantric, which I actually prefer over, hello, you're gonna focus on me? Which I actually prefer over the other one here. It's the fantastic that everyone lost their minds over because it was like another original hula matte situation not too neutral not too warm but i like my warm so that's that a lot lighter this is a little old too so maybe it lost some of its pigmentation but again i like this a lot more than the fantastic i actually have a video on my channel dedicated to comparing both mark jacobs bronzer i'll have the card up above me and down below for the video link very light very light on my skin tone but it still works it still works the nars bronzer in phalysis phalase this has also a similar hue to the caramel shade actually this appears very rosy in tone and i like that about it because i could actually get away with just applying this shade not only my cheekbone but a little on my cheeks as well just for that overall rosy bronze type of effect casino in this formula as well definitely has a little more depth to it so that's gonna show up a little a touch more neutral than the falace I'm just saying that wrong. I'm sorry. Now for my Anastasia bronzers. When these powder bronzers launched, I got like three of them. I went a little crazy. Well, right now, I don't know where my saddle one is, but that's okay. I have Cappuccino here, which I think I use the most. So Cappuccino here. That's how that one looks. And then I have Red Amber, which I actually love for skin tones that had olive in their skin but i just like how it 
looks on my face it, it gives me a really nice warming effect so that's rich amber next to cappuccino and the hourglass bronzer shade that i love to use is radiant bronze light and this is how it appears next to everything else hourglass doesn't really swatch well but once you apply it on your face it's like magic happens it's insane you know what's also insane this bronzer on the bridge of my nose does that look a little better I don't know. I'll just look crazy for the whole video. It's fine. So these are all the bronzer swatches from bronzer that I've been using a lot of, that they've been in my heavy rotation, that I switch between. I really love Hula Caramel. I think it's a great shade. A little goes a long way. Definitely make sure you tap off the excess on the back of your hand, on a microfiber towel, whatever, to catch some of the pigment so it doesn't end up all on your skin because it's very rich in color for sure. Got my face halo. So this certainly comes in handy, you know, not having to use a makeup wipe and all. Trying to reduce waste as best as I can. One swatch video at a time. And just to finish up the eyes, I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury, the Icon palette. I've been using this palette, you guys, and my thoughts are the same from my first look video. And if you've happened to see Mel's video on this, she articulated what I was feeling. These shades look like skin, and they're so foolproof and easy to blend, like you just cannot go wrong. Especially this shade here from the Diva column. I wore this all yesterday, and let me tell you. I'm actually gonna use my Sony G Detail Pro and just start going in all over my lid to quickly give the eyes some life so they don't drown with the bronze like so easy to apply and to blend like look how easy that was oh my god i really love a smoky like i want to look bronzed out and crazy not even kidding okay maybe it went a little crazy <laughs> maybe i should have used a smaller brush for my lower lash line I love it when I look like I have an eye disease. It's great. Not to make fun of anyone who actually has one. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Stop talking. Well, this is great. If this ever happens to you, make sure you just have some loose powder on hand and then that will take away some of what you apply. It'll kind of buff it down a little bit. Mistakes are always helpful to make if they could help someone else. Better. Wonderful. Mm. See? Forgiving. They will forgive you. They will forgive you. And now I'll take this shade here, just with my finger. It's from the Date Night column. Just put that all over the lid. Love. And then I'm gonna take the gold shade here, which is like one of my favorites in the palette, with my pinky, and just put that on the inner corner of my eye. I'm gonna curl these lashes. And of course, with Mama Pat's Fetish Eyes Mascara, I'm gonna plop that on and get these lashes up. And we cannot continue without For Real. <sighs> Just a little, oh, you know what? I realized I didn't even apply blush or highlighter. Mm. We're just gonna leave it like that. Here's the finished look, friends. Just with Hula Caramel Bronzer on, some lip gloss, spritz with Max Fix Plus, zhuzh up the eyes a little bit. And here's a wider shot of her final look. Let me know what you think down below. I absolutely love Hula Caramel. I'll be using it more often for sure. I just appreciate how it sculpts my face. At the same time, it provides beautiful warmth. I dig the undertone of it. I know some of you might not if maybe you're not looking for a bronzer that is a touch orangey in tone and I understand that people stay away from orange because we don't want to look orange we don't look like we want to have a fake tan my undertone allows me to use powders with that type of undertone and when applied it still appears like a natural tan effect on me if you think the original hula shade will work out better for you I totally get it but if you're my skin tone or anywhere near not only my skin tone or undertone hula caramel is great it is great i'll swatch it for you again it just has a really nice tone to it and it's just very silky in nature i think it's very blend friendly again love it you can use any brush with it if you want to use a big fluffy brush if you want to use a medium-sized brush because if you still insist on wanting to sculpt with hula caramel go right ahead i understand i rather use a big fluffy brush because if i'm getting tan and i want that saturation 
and I'm gonna make sure I use a big fluffy brush to just cover more of my face to create that effect. I know this is a hula caramel bronzer video, but I mean, this icon palette from Charlotte Tilbury, and I dig terracotta amber toned smoky eyes, okay? I just look so summery right now without a blush or a highlighter. That's what's crazy about it. Again, I don't know what it is, but this bronzer just naturally enhances the highlight points of my face. It could be the concealer too. Another reason why the concealer was in my favorites for February. But just looking on camera, and I'll post a picture up next to me just as a photo. It's still like a first impressions because I did try it on yesterday. I tried it on camera. I'm gonna use it all month. I'm not gonna try to use any other bronzer except the Hula Caramel. But right now, what I'm seeing, I love. Let me know down below if you picked up the new Hula Caramel or the new Hula Toasted, what comparisons you observe, how they compare to the other bronzers in your collection, and we'll take it from there. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until then, I'll see you on here again with another demo, tutorial, chit chat, or review. Or comparison vid. Take care and I'll see you again soon.